Hi, I'm John, and in this video I'm going to uh, demonstrate the latest uh, developments of my Commodore 64 operating system project, um, a text-based version, and uh, let's uh, start it up. So, let's go through a uh, detection screen which shows uh, the devices available for the system and uh, it shows the classic desktop with uh, the clock and the system menu down here and you can show some devices and this is an application that's used to show this the contents of these devices so it supports a simple ram drive <coughs> and some test applications that i made and uh, it can also open disk contents and show that. Um, so what's changed since the previous video I made, uh, the first two demonstrations, was that I've gone away from the big icons because I wanted applications to allocate uh, character memory for using in their own applications. And the big icons just take up a lot of memory, <laughs> take a lot of character memory so I thought that it's not really needed and also it didn't really look good with the names of four characters wide underneath so I moved away from that so now it's simple lists again so <clears throat> the system uh, has a number of um, classic operating system similarities uh, but it's not really multi-threaded as of yet. It's multi-threaded on a couple of areas, like uh, the drawing thread is multi-threaded. So if something takes a long time to draw, it will just spread over several frames if it's not enough CPU time. But um, the execution now is sort of locking. It expects the task to return when it's uh, complete uh, or to release the CPU sort of. Um, and you can see that I can run several applications here and you will also notice that the application in focus gets more uh, calls than the application that's not in focus because these are counting up every time I call it so to demonstrate that and I can also start this application I've created task view sort of shows the task running in the system at the moment and it will show that the application in focus tasks here is um, being called every time while all the others are sort of going round robin here. Um, so a couple of advancements uh, since then has also been the disk I.O. is uh, finally background processed. So if I close this and open disk drive again you can see it's running in the background everything else is running and it doesn't interrupt it not even uh, music will be interrupted while running uh, files now so I demonstrated a couple of these things from the other videos but uh, I can show them and talk about them a little bit uh, like for example uh, that any application can register itself as uh, uh, sort of application that can open a certain kind of extension so this will open any text document so if i double click this readme file down here i will then launch the notes application and then i'll actually send an event to the notes application to open this file so um, a glaring uh, things missing from the operating system is of course any kind of system menu like, uh, how can you open a file or save a file? Well, at the moment you can't actually save any files yet because I've not added that part of the disk uh, uh, operating system yet. Um, the disk loading is to, uh, using RQ loader that uh, runs in the background. Uh, it's uh, actually a fast loader, so it can be up to three times as fast as the kernel. Uh, it's based on the <coughs> covert ops bit covert ops bit ops I, i'm not sure what it's called uh, loader that's available uh, uh, and we 
which I found to be very good and easy to incorporate and I also made some adaptions so I can load the file system uh, directories and, and stuff like that and uh, I'll probably uh, uh, advance uh, no, work on that to incorporate saving as well uh, but at first I might be just using kernel for saving uh, for some time um, yes so um, um, applications don't have to be uh, have a window associated so all of these applications uh, ask to create the window or call a operating system function to create the window but for example this flash application just flashes these two characters down here so uh, it's um, and, and it disappears because it doesn't recover it. Uh, and the application can actually mess up the whole display if they want to. Uh, so that's, um, of course, an issue. But uh, it sort of demonstrates that uh, applications don't have to have a window, uh, but um, they can. So uh, if I, um, I have a couple of other things like an image viewer and a SID player, and uh, of course the image viewer I can just double click some kind of picture and it loads in the background you can see the tasks list here showing that uh, the Koala process is using the disk IO which means that no other application can do that actually at this moment um, and it shows the picture it's not uh, particularly fast loading at this moment because um, uh, the drawing uh, thread uh, is taking more time than it should do, even when it doesn't need to. So I'm probably going to improve that, and that will maybe make file loading even faster. Um, music, of course, you can start, uh, for example, Rod Hubbard's uh, Human Race here. So uh, <coughs> the. Um, SIG music is played in the background using uh, uh, its own RQ. So this actually installs its own RQ. So it, any application has this ability to be real multi-threading. But again, it needs to return just like any uh, music call uh, in, when using SIG music. It needs to return. But uh, this guarantees at least that the SID uh, playback is called at the same raster every time so it doesn't vary if it would be called all over the place you will immediately know this playback would be totally messed up so, so this is a very simple application it just lets you play and stop music and you can change the song here so, so what's changed since the last time is that uh, i've been trying to create uh, new um, controls so uh, the controls, uh, like this button control, uh, is a component that's very easy, easy to incorporate in your application. Uh, and uh, this is another controller, in fact, that's listing files at this point, but uh, sh should be able to list any kind of uh, things uh, with interaction where you can sort of hover across it and double click uh, to or click an item or something, uh, whatever you need to, the events to respond to. Um, so, so this does a change. Also, you notice that I've, instead of the frames I used to have outside the windows, I've decided to just make it simpler and have the frames uh, inside. So it's makes the area of the application smaller because one advantage of the other <laughs> version was that the frames sort of disappear when you put part it out here in the corner so meaning you can use the full screen uh, you can't do that right now because there is like this area here um, you will notice things like there is a resize icon down here but you can't click or drag it because that part isn't implemented yet neither is of course uh, maximization of a window because that's related to being able to size a window um, but uh, it will come eventually I also have an application here for showing the free memory um, at this moment it shows the heap 
that's available. 32 kilobytes of heap space is available at this point, but um, uh, it will be a little bit bigger because uh, I have allocated a bit of memory for this RAM drive, which isn't in the REU, but uh, it's um, is sitting in system memory. So you can see if I close applications, you will notice the free memory growing here. Well, that's actually all I have to demonstrate this time. Um, if you have any questions, uh, you can just type them in the comment section below.